Chapter 6. Time to bake. I'm sure you've already seen how a pizza oven is made. Usually it is a very big piece of equipment consisting of a large brick dome and a pavement covered with refractory stone. It must be built by skilled labor who knows how to handle the special materials used for the design. These ovens are able to reach and maintain correctly the high temperature needed to bake a good pizza. The average time spent in the oven is typically around 3 minutes if the temperature is around 320-330 degrees Celsius. However, each restaurant has its own interpretation of pizza, so the temperature and cooking times may also vary. For example, a traditional Neapolitan pizza stays in the oven just 60-90 to 90 seconds at a temperature between 430 and 480 degrees Celsius. These temperatures are reached powering the oven with different kinds of fuels, wood, electricity, gas. As you probably know, the oldest and most traditional cooking method is wood firing. Electric ovens are also common and gas ovens are spreading rapidly thanks to their cleanliness and practicality. There is an old ongoing debate about which cooking method is best or gives the best pizza. Since we are here, I will give you my two cents. I think that to cook a pizza is enough to bring it to a certain temperature and we don't care which fuel has brought it. But I won't go further, I don't want to take an active part in this discussion. At the end of the day, this does not concern us, since the oven we have at home does not offer us any choice regarding fuel. The only thing we could actually choose would be the temperature, but to be honest we don't really have an option here. In fact, not having the opportunity to reach the performance of a professional oven, we can only try to get as close as possible to it. Obviously, the result will be different, but still satisfactory if we are using the right measures. Let's switch on our oven then, remembering that pizza likes it hot, as we have already seen. If we want to achieve a special crunchy outside, soft outside texture, we need to cook as fast as we can. We are going to ask our oven its best performance and we will crank it up to the highest temperature it can reach, whichever it is. At some point the little light on the front panel of the oven will turn off, meaning that the temperature we set had been reached. Regardless, we will keep heating for an extra 10 minutes. Remember, always preheat the oven for at least half an hour. Finally, the oven must be set to static, not fan, or you will get a dry pizza. Not crispy, not crunchy, just dry. While you are waiting for the oven to get super hot, you should set all the rest up, so you will be ready when the temperature will be right. Let's do a quick recap. Your double is by now at room temperature and your mozzarella is already cut and has lost its excess water. Your peat tomatoes are chopped and squashed, all your toppings are ready, the tougher ones pre-cooked or sliced thinly. We're all set, the oven is scorching, the time has come. Let's dust our surface with some flour. We can be generous as we now know the technique to shake away the excess from our base. Then we stretch the double using the mousse we've seen in the previous chapter. Finally, we have some tomato sauce. Usually, 5 spoons are enough for a 12 inches base, but I leave this to your personal taste. Try not to exceed 6 or 7 spoons though, otherwise your pizza will be too moist and it will not cook evenly. We are now ready for the first cooking round and we will bake this red base we got. No toppings, but tomato sauce. The more naked our pizza is at this point, the better and faster it will cook. Moreover, even with the highest temperature we can afford, our pizza will stay inside the oven for a relatively long time, up to 10 minutes. Many of the toppings we typically want to use will dry up if they bake for such a long time. Just think about ham or pepperoni or mushrooms. They all will shrink and lose their texture and taste. Let's now put our red base into the oven, placing the baking tray straight at the very bottom. Let's call it the floor. Why is that? Because that area of the oven is extremely hot at this point and it will stay hot for several blessed seconds after we place the tray on it. This means our base will start to cook pretty quickly thanks to the physical phenomenon called conduction. The floor of our oven and the base of our pizza are in direct contact, therefore the heat will be transferred from one to the other. The cooking time will be the tricky part here. 
Every oven has its own magic and different brands, appliances could cook differently from one another, even if you set the same temperature. However, I will try to give you some guidelines. The highest temperature as seen near the knob of a household oven is 275 degrees Celsius or 527 Fahrenheit. This is not bad at all, you will be able to cook your red base in around 3 minutes. The opposite case is that the oven whose maximum temperature is 220 degrees Celsius, 428 Fahrenheit. Using this oven, the first round could even last twice as long, around 6 minutes. Considering these two situations as the extremes, we can work out anything in between. For example, at 250 degrees Celsius, 482 Fahrenheit, we would bake for around 4, 4.5 minutes. Consider using this very useful tip. Almost every oven comes with an included dripping pan. We can use it as we would use a baking stone and leave it inside the oven while it preheats. Again, it must be positioned as low as possible, ideally directly on the floor of the oven. If you use this trick, you should place your stretch base on a chopping board covered with a sheet of parchment paper as easy to slide inside the oven as it is to remove after the first cooking round. Once the first round is up, we take the red base out from the oven and we add the rest. The rest means just mozzarella if you are planning to prepare my dearest margarita, of course. Someone like to add a couple of leaves or basil. If that sounds like you, I would recommend to add them before the mozzarella, so it will prevent them from burning and becoming sour. You can even add them on top of the baked pizza, so they will release their flavor right there. When I bake for myself though, I never add any basil, because I really don't like it. Now I need to go, sorry, I had to give back my Italian passport. Jokes apart, the way we should treat basil suggests how we could treat several other toppings. I'm referring to the more delicate ones, those that become dry and or shrink after just a few minutes inside the oven. First coming in mind, ham or salami pepperoni. When they are thinly sliced, I will put them underneath the mozzarella so they will stay nice and juicy. If the slices are thicker, you can even put them on top, they should be okay. Same for the super common white close cut mushrooms. You will probably buy them whole and so you will be totally in control since it's going to be you slicing them. Personally, I will not slice them too thinly because I like to see them on top. If you are going to use pre-cooked toppings, like the aforementioned peppers, potatoes, aubergines or pumpkins, put them on top of the mozzarella. Do the same for onions, garlic, olives, capers, anchovies, sweet corn, sausage, pancetta, cheeses in general. I'd like to make a separate mention about spinach because I had the chance to use them in different ways. In a certain pizzeria I use fresh baby spinach and I put them straight on the base underneath the mozzarella. Somewhere else, I cook them super quickly beforehand and put them on top. When I use them for my home baking, very often I follow a third part and I put them on top of my pizza after I cook it. Now that you have figured out an order to place your toppings on your pizza, it's time to finish cooking it. Here starts the second round inside the oven, which could last anything in between 2 and 4 minutes, depending on the temperature. The rule of thumb could be to wait for the mozzarella to melt. However, if you find that the crust of your pizza looks overcooked for your taste by the time mozzarella has melted, then next time you should consider slicing it into smaller pieces or thinner slices. The opposite is also true. If the crust is not well done, but the mozzarella is already melted, try bigger pieces. Either way, make sure to buy the same brand, as different brands can melt differently, maybe quicker or slower. See? Making pizza is easy, even making good pizza is easy. But there are many elements, many little things you could and should know about. Once you are able to manage them all, you can really go to the next level and surprise your friends by giving them something that not even some real pizzerias would be able to offer. It is said that the devil is in the details, and this is true for pizza making too. The last table's details will be the ones you are going to take care of after the pizza will be finally baked. Again, I'm referring to toppings, the list is not finished yet. There are a few of them you are not supposed to cook, either because they will not resist a journey into the oven, 
or simply because they will taste better when they are raw. I already mentioned a couple of leafy ingredients, basil, which should be placed under the mozzarella, but it is also great to add raw after baking, exactly like its close relative, basil pesto, which I think must be added after baking since it's a condiment that's not supposed to be cooked. Then I mentioned spinach, which I like to add raw if they are the so-called baby spinach. Same goes for other leaves, the most common of them is probably rocket, but I had the chance to use lettuce, grass, microgreens and a few sprouts as well. Some meaty stuff must be added after cooking. The ingredient par excellence is cured ham, the raw one many call parma ham. There's nothing wrong, but parma ham is just one of the many known varieties. No matter which kind you bought, just don't cook it. Otherwise it will become so salty you will need to drink a barrel of water. Lately I've seen a wider diffusion of a particular kind of ham. It's called speck and it's cured with salt, pepper, spices and smoke. Try it, it's pretty good, but try it raw. Finally I want to mention duya, pronounced nuya or nuja, your choice. A kind of spreadable spicy sausage that comes from Calabria, the region I was born in. It's usually made with two parts of meat and one part of chili peppers, and we like to spread it on a slice of toasted bread. You can also use it to add a special something to many recipes, including a nice plate of pasta. Here in London it's already well known, but it's spreading fast and it's ready to take over the world. Unfortunately, the most common way it's used in restaurants is the wrong one, baked in the oven. The problem is, being made with high percentages of fat, it tends to burn. If your favorite pizzeria offers a pizza with this special ingredient, ask them to put it after they bake. In the end, you won't find do at any supermarket, so the staff should be indulgent. Beware though, the pizzaiolo could swear at you for this kinky request unless he or she is from Calabria. In that case, you will probably get a free drink and a new friend. Fishy pizzas are slightly less common than meaty ones, but still they exist. I'm really fond of salmon myself, and I like to lay those slices of pink happiness on top of a freshly baked pizza. If I plan to use prawns or shrimps, still I will add them after baking, but I will cook them briefly beforehand. That said, you can also bake them with your pizza, but they will shrink a lot, probably they will not be too appealing. Finally, you could contemplate using some beluga caviar soaked in Dom Perignon champagne, just like some creative pizzaiolo did in Dubai. I will refrain from suggesting anything here if you can afford it. You can do what you want. Last but not least, cheeses. Yes, there are cheeses that you'd better put after cooking. I'm referring to the aged ones like Parmigiano Reggiano and its brother Grana Padano. They have had a grain and they are not creamy, so you can make some shavings using a simple grater or a potato peeler. This way they will maintain a certain texture, they will blend nicely with other ingredients. They also give a nice appearance, you know, you start eating with your eyes and when there's something good looking on your plate, you're off to a good start. But we are not starting at all here, quite the contrary, we don't. Of course, I cannot include here all the ingredients in this world, because this will be beyond the scope of this book. But you can find me on my social networks account and ask me questions, I will gladly share my experience with you. Come on now, your pizza is on the plate, it's warm, fragrant and wraps on a nice smoky haze of loving scent. It's time to eat finally, buon appetito!